For years, Australia's largest casino operator, Crown, has secretly gambled its very existence in the pursuit of profits. Its thirst to make money at almost any cost meant it broke the law in China. Last year, 60 Minutes, along with the Sydney Morning Herald and Age newspapers, exposed Crown's wrongdoing. Our stories led to multiple federal and state investigations. Tomorrow, a New South Wales inquiry will begin hearing evidence about the way the company does business and the suspected crooks it's dealt with. Now, you might think that's already bad enough for Crown, but tonight it gets worse. Gambling giant Crown Resorts, whose biggest shareholder is billionaire James Packer, has lost its sparkle. It looked bad for the company last year, when 60 Minutes, the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age uncovered the extent of its misconduct in China. But we now know things are even more dire for Crown. Tonight, we reveal fresh evidence directly linking the business to suspected money laundering and organised crime in Australia. Is this Crown's worst nightmare? Oh, it would have to be. Uh, you, nobody wants to be the, the poster child for uh, money laundering and organised crime in, in Australia, and this is very much where they are heading at the moment. It's an undisputed fact. Casinos the world over are magnets for crooks, both small-time and highly organised. That's why, in countries like Australia, gambling is so tightly regulated. Crown boasts about how much money it kicks into government coffers through taxes. It insists it's a good corporate citizen. But we've uncovered casino transactions which suggest otherwise. They show how Crown sent a huge sum of money to a serious criminal, facilitating suspected money laundering. In January 2017, a Crown manager called Veng An directed casino staff to send half a million dollars to a Melbourne man called Nan Hu. Nan Hu isn't a high roller and he hadn't won the money. He's actually a convicted drug trafficker. Crown is meant to alert authorities about suspect transactions urgently, but in this case, it stayed quiet for almost a year. As Crown's Vice President of International Operations, Veng An's job is to make sure the casino's high rollers get whatever they want. This made An familiar with the discreet nightclub in Melbourne's Chinatown called Heaven. It was run by gangster and cocaine trafficker Nan Hu. Two years ago, Veng An also directed half a million dollars to be sent to Nan Hu from a Crown-controlled account. Why would a convicted drug trafficker with no income, such as Nan Hu, value $500,000 sent from Crown Casino? This is a basic uh, money laundering typology, you know, uh, taking cash and, and putting it through a casino uh, and hopefully you know, turning that into some level of, of winnings uh, or at least the ability to make it look like it was winnings. Um, so that's, that's money laundering 101 really at a casino. An unemployed person with $500,000 in and of itself is a uh, basic red flag. So but when you combine all of those things together, then you've really got some serious questions that you need to be asking. Todd Harland is the former Director of Intelligence Absolutely. at yes. Australia's anti-money laundering agency, Austrac. For someone like Nan Hu, a convicted drug trafficker, the money from Crown arrives in his account. What does that allow him to say? It says then uh, I won that money legitimately at, when I visited the casino. So uh, the, the, the basics of money laundering is being able to create some level of distance from the criminality uh, or, or deception about uh, the story and saying, OK, I've created a new story about the genesis of this money. It's not from criminal takings, it's from legitimate winnings at a casino. And what better a story than $500,000 from a listed casino company? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. It puts legitimacy around that, uh, that cheque or that transaction. What's more damning for Crown is the source of this money. The account it came from, while controlled by the casino, is also linked to another crook, Tom, Mr Chinatown, Jack. As we revealed last year, while he was a high roller agent for the casino, Jiao was wanted by Interpol for serious crimes. So the 500,000 came from a crook and went to a crook, 
and all facilitated by Crown. Does this transaction have all the hallmarks of money laundering? Uh, based on everything that you've told me, it certainly does, yes. The Crown has facilitated money laundering. No, I'm not saying they have. Um, I'm, I'm saying that on the surface, I can't think of a reason why they haven't. There, there must be an overwhelm, overwhelming business reason to transfer those funds that I'm simply not aware of and I can't think of what it would be. Former gaming regulator Alan Pedley works for casinos all over the world. He helps them identify cases of money laundering and then how to combat it. What he can't understand is why Crown waited so long to report this serious breach of its own strict rules to Austrac. Crown took 12 months or so to report this highly suspicious transaction. What does that delay suggest has gone on? One of two things. There are so many transactions like this that it was uh, relatively routine, which I'm sceptical of. Two, that um, customers were of such high value that uh, businesses were uh, perhaps prepared to overlook their normal money laundering uh, controls. To turn the blind eye? Yeah, yeah. Not surprisingly, the recipient of the half million dollars, criminal and nightclub boss Nan Hu, has shut down heaven and fled to China. But Veng An, Crown's VP of Overseas Business. My name's Nick McKenzie. I'm a journalist from 60 Minutes. And I'm, I'd like to ask you about your relationship with a man called Nan Hu. Continues to call Melbourne home. You asked some staff at Crown to send $500,000? No, no. To Nan Hu? No. No, you didn't ask people from Crown to do this? Are you no. sure? Yeah. Yeah, did you know Heaven's Nightclub in Melbourne? Yeah, but I can't answer any question. No. no. Could you tell me why you sent that $500,000 to Nan no, Hu? No, no, I didn't. So no. I can't answer the question. You did? No, I, you got the you emails. I understand you no, sent I emails. Yeah, I, yeah I, I can't answer any question. OK. Did you know Nan Hu's a drug trafficker? No idea. No. But Crown has even more to worry about than a suspicious transaction involving a senior manager and a convicted drug dealer. We can reveal another one of its business partners, someone who helped Crown recruit wealthy Chinese gamblers to its casinos, is very much on the radar of Australian police. This man is not only considered to be linked to global crime rings, but also a threat to the nation's security. Far from shunning him, though, Crown rewarded him. His name is Cheng Ting Kong, and Crown gave his high roller business its own gaming floor here in Melbourne. We've confirmed Cheng Ting Kong was listed as what's called an Australian Priority Organisation target. In other words, our law enforcement agencies think he's a major player in powerful global crime networks. Despite this, he's a massive figure in Australian racing. In 2013, Cheng spent $18 million buying one of Victoria's premier thoroughbred studs, Eliza Park, and many millions more buying and breeding racehorses. That is so superb. Won it by about three lengths. He can celebrate his wins here at his company's luxury restaurant, Sun Kitchen, at one of Melbourne's premier locations on Albert Park Lake. But Cheng's biggest business, at least until recently, was running a high roller tour operation called Sun City in partnership with Crown Casino. Are you surprised that Sun City has such alleged deep links to organised crime? I don't know how deep they go, but I'm not surprised at all that organised crime uh, has interests in junkets at casinos. It's pretty obvious. It's, it's, it's why junkets uh, exist in the large. So then do we buy Crown's explanation that it just didn't know? I couldn't imagine that a casino... If, if Crown had said that they didn't know um, that a junket organiser was involved in organised crime, I think they're pulling your leg. Other gaming bodies were certainly worried about Cheng. The Hong Kong Jockey Club, just like Crown, hired internal investigators to probe his business operations. But unlike Crown, the club banned Cheng and his Sun City associates 
because of their suspected crime links. Surely Crown should have said to the Hong Kong Jockey Club, you've banned Sun City, you've black banned them. Shouldn't we do the same? Uh, again, it comes down to risk appetite. So uh, maybe the Hong Kong Jockey Club are uh, more risk averse than Crown Casino. Uh, maybe they've just made a better decision. Maybe Crown is willing to go into bed with organised Exactly, crime. yeah. The allegations were expanded upon on 28 July 2019 when the television news program 60 Minutes aired a one-hour program entitled Crown Unmasked. The most public of the multiple inquiries into Crown is the probe by former New South Wales judge Patricia Bergen, who's examining if the company should be allowed to run its soon-to-be-completed Barangaroo High Roller Casino. Eight years ago, Crown's major shareholder, James Packer, said high rollers from Asia should be embraced and Barangaroo would cater especially for China's super rich. What we're talking about um, you know, is a tables only casino, no slot machines, and tables because that is um, predominantly the game of choice for, for Chinese gamblers. And the reality is if you're going to build a, a hotel for, you know, call it a billion dollars, um, the rooms alone won't pay for it. Do you want that licence? I genuinely believe if we get the chance to do something in Sydney, the people of Australia will win out of that proposal. There'll be jobs, there'll be taxes, there'll be tourism, there'll be more people coming to Australia looking to spend money, and I think that's a good thing. That sounds like a big yes to me. That's a big yes. Our new evidence raises further concerns that Crown's high roller operations are being used by criminals. Crown says it complies with regulations and has extensive protections in place. But whatever the outcome of the ongoing inquiries, the company has already been forced to replace its executive chairman, John Alexander, and overhaul its anti-money laundering controls. But is it too little, too late? How does this level of criminality allowed to, to uh, come into that business? There's lots of levels that have to be looked at here from the ground up and, and from the top down, you know, uh, at the same time. So. Who has allowed that? Let's look at the culture of that organisation. It looks, on the surface at least, pretty ugly. Absolutely. We asked Crown to respond to the issues we've raised. We were told the company takes the allegations very seriously. It has notified the relevant federal and state regulators. It says it will assist in any investigation set up to examine these matters. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.